Hey, what's up YouTube? Matt from Legal Bros coming to you guys with another video today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how we break in and form our gloves. It's one of the most popular questions that we get asked on our Instagram DMs or Instagram comments and also on our YouTube comments. So I decided to come at you guys with a quick kind of tutorial on how we do it. So one of the first things we do as soon as we get a glove, besides obviously putting our hands in it and starting to mold it a little bit and squeeze it and see how it squeezes is we're going to go in and we're going to loosen up the fingers instantly. One of the first things that we do really helps uh, with the break-in process. If you don't know how to loosen up fingers on a glove, go back to one of our previous videos. We did make a tutorial about it. So what I've learned is that when you loosen up the fingers, it makes the glove obviously a lot wider and a little bit looser on top, which makes it a little bit easier to squeeze. When you get a new glove, especially a high quality glove, it usually comes very stiff, especially this one and my custom, which I will show you guys later. These Don Morton exclusives are bricks. Any real high quality glove you're gonna get, unless you get it from a retail store, like a Dick Sporting Goods or a Sports Authority where a lot of people have had their hand in it, you're probably gonna get a glove that's pretty dang stiff. So it's gonna need a lot of break in. So once you loosen up on top, it gives it a little bit um, an easier uh, mold to it. After loosening up the fingers, I get it to where I like. I like them decently stretched out, uh, but nothing super crazy. I also ran out of lace on this one, so I really couldn't go any bigger than this, even if I wanted to. So one of the first things I do is I like to play catch with a glove almost as soon as I get it. To go out in the backyard, start playing catch, really form it to how I like it start playing catch, I really focus on, while I'm playing catch, is catching the ball in the same exact spot. For me, my pocket's right at the base of the web. Very traditional spot to put the pocket, even a little bit more right here. Sorry, I'm like blocking where I'm in. It's just about right here. So that's really where I focus on catching the ball. Your throwing partners should understand that and really try to keep the throws pretty accurate. You know, Mar especially Marco. If you guys knew Marco like I knew Marco, Marco is the worst throwing partner ever. He loves to have fun while he's warming up, especially on days when he's not pitching. When he is pitching, he's a lot more serious. But if not, he does like the Uena Cespedes throws back to you. He switches arm angles. He throws knuckleballs. Does all that stuff that you hate in a throwing partner. So I do have to make him be pretty serious, especially with the new glove. So I really focus on getting it in the pocket. Once I start to get a decent um, base to the pocket, I'm going to go in and I'm going to flare it out. Uh, I, I usually go light with my flares. I do it in like stages. So when I first got this, it was obviously straight. Then I'll go a little bit over, a little bit over, a little bit over. It's exactly where I get it, and then I leave it. Once it gets there, that's perfect for me. I do a harder flare on the thumb than I do on the pinky. I think he's a pretty light flare. It's almost... Nothing, but like I said, I do do it in stages. I'm not one of those guys that as soon as they get the glove, they're going to just crunch it. Uh, it's not something I'm a huge fan of. If you like it that way, then that's up to you. Um, I like to just go light. I really roll my fingers. I want to keep that nice and bowl shape to it as much as possible. So I'm going to go in, and then I'm going to force it out a little bit. Really give it a little bit of width. Um, what I'm trying to achieve is a wide glove that is also bold. Um, there's other ways to break it in. You could do just a bowl where it's like almost like this. Then you could do um, like the Joss Donaldson or Tulo when your fingers are super wide and flat. Um, there's a lot of different ways to break in a glove and the best thing to know is how you like your gloves. Once you know that, that's half the battle. So from there, after I play some catch, I will uh, do some mallet work. If you don't have a mallet, mallets, first of all, they're really not that expensive. Uh, they're around like $15, but if for some reason you can't afford that, um, a good alternative is to use an old bat. Um, I'm just going to grab one right now for you guys. Just give me one second. I'm right here. I have this T-ball wood bat. I bought it at a garage sale for a dollar. Um, I do like one hand training with it and stuff, and I also use it for a glove mallet. Um, in a dire situation. I have glove mallets, but if I was to need it, I could use it. Really just focus on pounding in this area 
and you're really just gonna just mash, 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 mash. I'm really big on developing a pocket and breaking in a glove, and every other piece of it will just fall together. Once you have a pocket, it's the most important part of the glove, in my opinion. And I mean, just look at it. this thing is a dime piece. It's broken in absolutely perfectly. Really, don't try to force close a glove um, if it's not ready to close. Um, if you really are in a rush to break in a glove, do the hot water method on it. We also have a video about that, a tutorial. Sometimes when you're forcing a glove to squeeze, it's not ready, it's going to cause creases. Uh, this one doesn't have any. It has a little bit of wrinkling here from the hinge, but if I condition that, it'll come right out. But I see people like creases um, in their gloves and all that kind of stuff. That's because you're forced closing the glove when it's not ready. If the glove doesn't want to close, what I do is I let it hit it, and I don't really force it to close around it. So once it hits the pocket, I go like that, really make sure it's hitting in that perfect spot, and then I just transfer it out. Pounding and pounding and pounding, playing lots of catch, and a lot of mallet work will really help loosen up the pocket. Um, the way we keep our shape, a lot of people do, do we have a web gem, do we have a glove guardian? No, we just really make sure we take care of our gloves. I never lay my glove like this. I never throw it on the ground. My coach is like, we're going to run. I walk over to the line and I put my glove down like that. That's it. I'm not one of those guys that just throws their glove or does that. I really make sure I put my glove flat any chance I put it down, even in my bag. Some of you guys don't know, um, I catch and I also play the infield. I have two separate bags. I have a catcher's bag, which has my catcher's equipment, cleats, accessories, anything else, my bats. And I have a bag just for gloves. All my gloves go in the bag like this with a softball in the palm. They lay just like this. So if someone was to fall on top of my bag, all the gloves are going to collapse is just like that. It's not going to really pancake out. It's not going to roll over and boot like this. It's going to stay in the bag just like this. It's a big thing to maintain your glove after you put a good form on it. Another thing is I condition it not very frequently. I do it every so often when the time calls for it. This I think it's had one conditioning. I got it in like the fall, end of the fall. Um, I haven't gotten much use with this yet. I mean, we only played one game this year. It's just crazy weather right now in Jersey. So I do have a game scheduled for tomorrow. I am hoping we're going to play. Weather's well, going to be supposed to be decent, but you never know. So that's how I really am uh, going to be coming at the gloves with you guys. That sentence made no sense at all. I forget I even said that. That's how I break in my gloves, guys. I uh, just want to show you guys a, a progress. There's a little progress on my custom hard to hide. A lot of people message me. I've had this glove for two months, and I can't break it in. I haven't had this glove for a week yet. And yes, I understand I am holding it too in the pinky. How? How do people have their gloves for months and don't break it in? I really just can't even grasp it. How? If you don't put in the work and it just sits there, the glove's obviously not going to break itself in. You know, and it's... <coughs> excuse me, sorry. It's even more of a pocket when I actually throw it into it. This is no uh, velocity behind the ball at all, obviously. And I'm still so much better along than I was the first day I got this I wasn't even able to move it I was like this and now I'm already at the point where I can catch a ball comfortably not anything it's not game ready or anything just kind of want to show you guys you got to put in the work to get your glove broken in if you don't want to put in the work it's not going to break in you know I, I can't really help you guys all the tips in the world you're still going to actually have to do the work to do it if you really don't want to break in your glove send it to us and for a fee We'll break it in just like we break in our gloves. If you're interested in that, hit me up on Instagram. If not, that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment, like, subscribe. And until next time, have a good day.